Thus, Uktva speaking, Upadatam stopped, Putram the sun, Oranyakashipu, Oranyakashipu, Rusha with great anger, Andikrita Atma. Made blind to self-realization. Swa Utsangat. From his lap. Nirashyata. Through. Mahitale. Upon the ground. Translation. After Pallad Maharaj has spoken in this way and become silent, Rainikashipu, blinded by anger, threw him off his lap and onto the grounds. So there's no purport to this text, nor the next text, but the third text has a purport, so we'll read the next text and the third text. Text 34. <laughs> Yatamashvayam Badyu Lipsarayata Nairtaha. Indignant and angry, his reddish eyes like molten copper, Hiranyakashipu said to his servants, O demons, take this boy away from me, he deserves to be killed. Kill him as soon as possible. Nice father. Text 35. I am me bratri ha so yam hitwa swan suredo damaha pitrovya pitrivya hum to pardo you Vishnurna salvad architi. This boy Balad is the killer of my brother. For he has given up his family to engage in the devotional service of the enemy, Lord Vishnu, like a menial servant. So, purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, Ki, Jai. Aranyakashipu considered his son, Pallad Maharaj, to be the killer of his brother because Pallad Maharaj was engaged in the devotional service of Lord Vishnu. In other words, Pallad Maharaj would be elevated to Sarupya liberation, and in that sense he resembled Lord Vishnu. Hmm. Therefore, Pallad was to be killed by Hiranyakashipu. Devotees, uh, Vaishnavas, attained the liberations of Sarupya, Salokya, Sarshdi, and Samipya, whereas the Mayavadis are supposed to attain the liberation known as Sayuja. Sayuja Mukti, however, is not very secure, whereas Sarupya Mukti, Salokya Mukti, Sarshti Mukti, and Samipya Mukti are most certain. Although the servants of Lord Vishnu Narayan and the Vaikuntha planets are equally situated with the Lord, the devotees there know very well that the Lord is the master, whereas they are servants. So, Omagada Timananda Shah, Gananjana Shalakaya, Taksur and Viditam, Yena Tuzmai, Shigadavena Maha. So, actually, we see this particular scenario or dynamic occurring in several places in the Vedic literatures. Uh, and the scenario I'm saying, talking about is one, God bless you, one renouncing his family for a higher purpose, uh, or because the family happens to be uh, devotees, or the family happens to be demons. <laughs> There's renunciation. Because actually in, in the Vedic culture, you know, obedience to one's family is actually considered uh, a very high standard. Uh, you know, just like you have the story of the Ramayana, how Ram was uh, and Lakshman were there, and Lakshman was so obedient to Ram, and Shatrugna was so obedient to Bharat, and Ram was so obedient even to Kaikeyi, 
Amazing, isn't it? What if you had a stepmother like that? <laughs> anyway, and uh, of course, Bart, hmm, not Bart, but Lachman, out of his devotion to Ram, was ready to imprison his own father. So that's one, because that's, that's an interesting story that uh, Lachman said to Ram, the old man is senile, he's been controlled by this lady. They just put him in prison. Yeah. And Ram said, no, no, don't do that. That's not appropriate. So, so, you know, that's one instance of actually renunciation of ordinary etiquette uh, for a higher purpose. In both cases. So, uh, and then, on the other hand, you have uh, Vibhishan, who rejected his brother in order to serve his brother's enemy. Who was his brother's enemy? Ram. Ram. And his brother, of course, was Ravan. So there's another case of that. And then in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, so you have it going both ways. In other words, you have uh, devotees rejecting their family in order to serve Krishna, and then you have you know, demons rejecting their family. <laughs> Or devotees rejecting family members who don't want to serve Krishna. And there's a story in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that's very interesting in this regard. It's a story of uh, Amoga, who was a Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya's uh, son in law. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya had a daughter named Sati, not Sati, Sati, S A T H I. And uh, her, his daughter was married to Amoga. So anyway, one day, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya invited Chaitanya Mahaprabhu over for prasadam. And he was feeding Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he was trying, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was trying to keep Amoga away because he knew Amoga was a critic. And so what happened is that uh, he was standing there with a stick, but somehow or other Amoga got in. And Amoga said to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and to Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, this sannyasi is eating like, you know, seven times or ten times as much as an ordinary person. And Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya got so upset with Amoga that he started chasing him to beat him with a stick. And of course, he couldn't catch up to him because Amoga was young and Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was an older gentleman. And uh, at that point, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya and his wife said that our daughter, Sati, uh, no longer has a husband. You know, that, and that's a really heavy thing. You know, in Vedic culture, you know, you know in the West, it's, it's pretty easy. You know, you just give up your husband. You know, so, okay, let's change one. You know, it's like going to the uh, automobile dealer. You know, you just <laughs> trade in, you know, your old car for a new car. <laughs> and so they trade in old husbands for new husbands. You see, there's all old wives for new wives, isn't it? Newer, prettier models. <laughs> More modern models. Anyway, so... <laughs> so, but in the Vedic culture, that's considered abominable. Because, uh, you know, you, you talk about the chastity of a woman towards her husband. Yet, she was told that she no longer had a husband. And so, of course, later on, the uh, story has a happy ending uh, in that Amoga, well, wasn't happy in the middle portion, uh, he got very, very, very sick. You know, he had cholera. And cholera is actually very sick. And he was getting ready to die. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, understanding that uh, mm, the death of Amoga would have been tantamount to the death of uh, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, you know, because both were upset. Uh, Lord Chaitanya rushed up to where Amoga was, touched his heart, and said, Amoga, in the heart of a Vaishnava, this envy does not exist. And he cured Amoga, and Amoga begged for forgiveness, and Amoga basically slapped his own mouth and said, with his mouth I have offended you, and he apologized, and he started dancing ecstasy, and he was cured. And then the marriage was still there. <laughs> So, I mean, there are injunctions, too, that uh, the wife should remain faithful to the husband have been the case of the husband, this is stated in the Chaitanya Jaratamrita, too, of the husband being fallen, irreconcilably fallen. What does irreconcilably mean? Anyone know? Cannot be reconciled. 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 Cann
song. That, that, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's impossible. He's not coming back. He ain't coming back. So in that case, the wife is supposed to renounce the husband. That's pretty heavy, isn't it? Nowadays, we're very concerned about, you know, disciples getting married to demons. And the, uh, the lady often thinks that by her devotion, she's going to make him a devotee. Does that work? No, as we often say, that the man and the woman get married, the woman is thinking the man is going to change, and the man is thinking the woman won't change, and the opposite happens. <laughs> the woman changes, the man, he never changes. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, that's called, actually technically in psychology, that's called <coughs> codependence. Where someone is thinking, by my love, he may be an abuser, he may be a rakshasa, he may be a demon, but by my love, he will change. It doesn't happen. Very rarely. Very rarely. I mean, once in a while. One out of a million. So anyway, so, so basically, one should be ready. Janaka Pandit said, it's a very interesting statement, uh, that in order to... Let me try to remember everything. Uh, all the details of this. Anyway, so in order to save a country, you have to renounce a city or something like that. I don't remember all the details. And in order to save a... a uh, anyway, whatever. You, you, whatever. A village, you can renounce a person. And in order to save yourself, family, you should be ready to renounce... Family, then person. What's that? Family, then person. Family, then person. Yeah, then you should be ready. In order to save yourself, you should be ready to renounce the whole world. So, anyway, so the point is we have a purpose in our lives. And our lives, our purpose in our life is to serve Krishna, become Krishna conscious. So, we should accept everything favorable for that. And the hard part is rejecting everything unfavorable. So, you know, favorable, of course, it doesn't mean we become materially renounced. But we engage in the process called uh, yukta vairagya, which means accepting things that are pleasing to Krishna. And that principle of accepting everything favorable, rejecting everything unfavorable, these are the principles of sharanagati, two of the six principles of sharanagati listed by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now, another topic here in the purport is the topic of the different types of liberation the devotees have. And it's interesting that's mentioned here, that uh, Pallad Maharaj got sarupya liberation. That means in the spiritual world, he would actually look like Lord Vishnu. That's interesting, because swarupya means, or sarupya, means one, one has the same form as the Lord. And that's uh, mentioned in the uh, Brihad Bhagavatamrita, in the Brihad Bhagavatamrita, you have the story of uh, Gopa Kumar, who is looking for his ultimate uh, destination. And he's investigating not only places on this earth, but also the heavenly planets and ultimately uh, the Vaikuntha planets. And while he goes to, when he goes to the Vaikuntha planets, he gets confused when he first enters. Vaikuntha Loka, because he sees that everyone there looks like Vishnu and Lakshmi. And they're all riding on their airplanes, which are, you know, look like almost like Garuda, like bird planes, not just like the planes you have now that crash. <laughs> Actually, I was listening to Prabhupada talk about how Prabhupada has designed, and now Krishna has designed, even mosquitoes, you don't see mosquitoes crash. Yeah. The Prabhupada was saying that mosquitoes are so expert that they find the place, you know, where your blood vessels are, your pores or something like that, and they immediately go for it. And so we don't find airplanes or pilots so, uh, so expert like that. So anyway, so, uh, <clears throat> anyway, so he saw all these airplanes there and all the Vishnu forms, and he was offering his obeisances to devotees who were not Vishnu. He was saying, you know, please accept my obeisances, God. And they said, you know, this is wrong. Because they all 
look like the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So that's Sarupya Mukti. So here it says that Pallad Maharaj would be elevated to Sarupya liberation, which means have, he'd have the same form as the Lord. Now the other liberations mentioned here, in addition to Sarupya, are Salokya, which means uh, living on the same planet as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And then Sharshti, which means basically having the same opulences as the Lord. And Samipya, which means associating with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Prabhupada comments that the Mayavadis, they get this fifth type of liberation, which is known as Sayuja. Sayuja means to merge into the existence or merge into the uh, Brahma Jyoti, that is the effulgence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And the reason that that liberation is not very secure, which Prabhupada comments on here, is because in that liberation, or when one has that type of liberation, one doesn't have any activities or relationships. So the soul floating in the Brahma Jyoti, who apparently is merged into the Brahma Jyoti, but not actually merged in the Brahma Jyoti. Example given by Prabhupada and by the Acharyas is like the green bird you see in uh, Vrindavan, these green parrots. You see the green parrots? who apparently are merged into the tree because they are the same color as the tree that's called camouflage. Like the soldiers, isn't it? They dress in camouflage. Did you do that when you went on the... Wow. So people couldn't see you. Sometimes they even smear camouflage paint on their faces. You did that too. You did that? Yes. Do you have a picture of yourselves? Uh, There might be one. That would be interesting. So anyway, so... Uh, so it apparently the uh, soul is merged in the Brahma Jyoti, but the Brahma Jyoti is composed, composed of individual jiva souls, and that's why it's so light. It's not impersonal. Sometimes the statement is the impersonal Brahman, but that's not a literal statement. The Brahman is not impersonal. The Brahman is composed of all these tiny jiva souls floating in it. What's impersonal is the liberation that people have, or their consciousness. Anyway, so they have no activities in the Brahman, and ultimately, as described in the Bhagavatam, aruya kuchena param patam patanchido yushmad angreyaha, which means ultimately they fall down, come down, back down to the earth planet. So it's not a very stable liberation, and it doesn't have all the factors of Satchitananda. Which factors does it have, Keshav? The Brahman effulgence, if you realize the Brahman effulgence or enter into the Brahman effulgence, which of the three or how many of the three of such an ananda do you experience? Let him answer. Mm-hmm. Take a guess. Sat, sat, chit, ananda. Sat means eternal, chit means knowledge, ananda means bliss. Which ones were... This is the $64 million question, so... <laughs> One of them. <laughs> which one? Which one, or all of them, or how many of them? Oh, so one of them, which is... Common sense. Use your common sense. Knowledge? Mm-hmm. As they say in the game show. You know, they have the game shows here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, next victim. So, uh... Victim. <laughs> yes? It's eternal. Eternal. Mm-hmm. The sat aspect. And if one wants to realize the knowledge aspect, in addition to the sad aspect, what realization... Well, well, you're out of the game, so... so, What what realization is that? To to realize the chit aspect, what, what type of realization is it called when one realizes the chit aspect of the Lord in addition to the sad aspect? Dun, 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 dun. You know, the game Find show. friend. Why didn't you phone a friend? Oh, dun, dun, dun. Think about it. All right, I'll give you a hint. You can un- uncover one of the, one of the, the, you know, like in one of the game shows, you uncover yeah. one of the one of the squares or something like that. So here's a hint. 
there's three types of realization. One is called Brahman realization, one is called, I'm saying it quickly, Paramatma realization, the other one is called Bhagavan realization. Which realization is it when one realizes the chit aspect of the Lord and the, uh, the sat aspect of the Lord? Paramatma. Paramatma. You got it, okay. So we win. You got you got enough to what? How much money now so far? Four hundred twenty-eight dollars. <laughs> now here's the here's the last one. When one realizes the the uh, sat chit and ananda aspects of the Lord, what type of realization is that? Bhagavan realization. Okay, you get a free trip to Fiji. <laughs> So, <clears throat> so in, in other words, the devotees realize the eternality, which is sat. They have full knowledge, which is chit, and what? They experience ananda bliss. In fact, not only ananda, but uh, ananta ananda. What is ananta? ananda? Endless. Endless, yes. And also, <clears throat> keval ananda. As the acharyas uh, say, Baja Baja Bhai Chaitanya Nidha Kevalananda Kanda. It's the path only of happiness, only of bliss. So hopefully we're following this path rather than being impersonalist. So any questions or comments? Keep class short. Questions, comments? Yes. So we mentioned. Uh the Brahma Jyoti, that is eternal, but the Jiva souls ultimately fall from there. Yeah, yeah. How is it eternal? Well, it's eternal because sometimes there's some of them going up, some of them coming down. Mm-hmm. You know, Krishna always keeps supplied, you know, electric electricity with the Jiva souls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just like, what can you say? Just like a light bulb. Of course, these are LEDs. <coughs> they don't burn out very often. But the old light bulbs, especially if you were in India, because the electricity, the voltage changes so rapidly, and light bulbs blow. Do you ever have a light bulb explode on you in India? No. It happened to me. <laughs> Every time you, you're we sitting there. You yeah, had that happen at school. Anyway, so <clears throat> so it's like that. There'll always be lights, light bulbs, because we'll keep replacing them as soon as they burn out. So that's a metaphor. So there'll always be a Brahma Jodi because there'll always be those who want to enter into the Brahma Jodi, and there'll be those who fall down from the Brahma Jodi. Because it's not a constitutional position. The constitutional position of the living entity is service. So in the material world, Prabhupada comments, that we're also serving. But what are we serving in the material world? Does anyone know? Senses. The senses. We're obedient servants. I often say that if you want to see who your master is, go to a mirror and stick your tongue out. Huh? That's your guru. Huh. You know, bacho, <laughs> vega, manasa, kriyo. He doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. He doesn't apply to him. No, it doesn't apply to him. Mostly it does. It applies to him. It applies to him. Bacho, vega, manasa, kriyo, vega, jiva, vega. What do we chant every, or people chant during the Prashanam prayer? No, 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 no. What is um, English, please? Oh, basically, it's like say, please let this food satisfy my senses. My senses. <laughs> <laughs> no, you left out the first part. Please let this food satisfy my senses. No, that's not really it. It says the first part is Sharira <laughs> Avidya. What does that Avidya mean? Ignorance. This body is ignorant. Sarira avijaja jitendriya tekala. The senses are a network of paths leading to death. And ajua phale vishaya shagare. You know, the soul is in vishaya. Dharmade jwayati. Loba moya, the greed. You know, actually, it's very interesting. Loba moya sudurmati. It's very difficult to overcome. Uh, and of all the senses, what sense is the most difficult to control? Tongue. Jiva. 
jiva. Lobo my jiva yati. Anyway, but you, Lord Krishna, have given us this prasadam, Bhagavad prasadam, to help us control the tongue. This is it. It doesn't say let us enjoy the, our senses. So, <laughs> help us control the tongue. And so now let us take this prasadam and love call out for what? Let him answer. Call out for Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda to please help us. Got it? So anyway, so that's, that is our master in this world. So we're always servants. That's the amazing thing. You can't get out of that particular dynamic at all. What's a dynamic? Dynamic, okay. Dynamic means things that happen. Oh. Yeah, you can't get, like, you can't get out of serving. Just like, Kana, you're a servant of your parents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we're all, it's interesting, that someone is a servant of someone else or our senses. And so, Prabhupada gives the example, we'll see if someone someone knows this example. What is the metaphor Prabhupada gives in regard to a government to show that everybody is serving the government? The tax system? Not quite. That everybody has to serve the government. What's the metaphor? No, that you're, if you're a criminal, what happens when you're a criminal? Go to jail. jail. What happens in the jail? You get community service. Then, but you have to service. service. Yeah. Oh, you do? Community service, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yes, now that you just get punished and they <laughs> just strap you to a chair and whip you. Mm. But at least in most prisons in civilized countries, they actually have you do some service. In America, they used to do two things, make license plates. Mm. And all... The roads, the uh, infrastructure in America was, was done by chain gangs. Yeah. You know what a chain gang is? And so, so you're forced to serve. Prabhupada said you're forced to serve voluntarily or involuntarily. Involuntarily means force. So one way or other, you have to serve. So better to serve voluntarily because what? Then you can be happy. And that's your constitutional position. And what does an Uttama Adhikari see? What's the Uttama Adhikari's vision? Suffering. I understand. But also, everybody's serving Krishna. He sees like that. That's why an Uttama Adhikari doesn't preach. An Uttama Adhikari thinks everybody's serving Krishna so nicely. Because they're under the jurisdiction either of Krishna's internal potency or external potency. Okay, any other questions or any questions? So that is why the Uttamadikari has to come down to the Majamadikari to preach. Because the Uttamadikari thinks, sees everything's going the way it's supposed to go. You know? Everybody should do that. Uh, Maya or. <laughs> Directly or indirectly. Right. But an Uttama Adhikari does see that everybody, you know, certain people are not pure devotees of Krishna. It's not they become stupid yes. by becoming an Uttama Adhikari. But he's so immersed. The whole point is that he's so immersed in his relationship with Krishna that really, he doesn't really even see what's happening in the material world. He's just like, Govinda, Jaya Jaya, Gopala Jaya Jaya. And then, you know, whatever's happened in the mature world since, well, everything's happening according to the Lord's plan, which is true. So, we should be Majamadikaris. All right. No other questions? Yes. So it says, Prahalad Maharaj got Sarupya liberation. Yes, Sarupya. So, uh, my understanding was that... Um, uh, Prahlad Maharaj is a pure devotee, so he didn't end up doing, in Golok now. He went to Vaikuntha Lok. So his devotion... He's a pure devotee of 
the Ryan form, of course you could say, I mean, I was thinking about this, so Rupya, he's a devotee of Lord Nishingadev, does that mean he looks like Lord Nishingadev in this? No. Actually, Prabhupada commented that the non-human forms or incarnations or avatars of the Lord don't have planets in the spiritual world. What if they're hot? What? What if they're hot? So I've never figured it. What if they're hot? Half human, half animal. That's non-human. Only the human forms have uh, planets in the spiritual world. So. No. No, I know sometimes what he's talking about, Nishinga Loka or things like that. But according to what Prabhupada said, the non-human forms, yeah, I'm just going by Prabhupada's statements, the non-human forms don't have planets in the spiritual world. So that means Pallad Maharaj would not look like Lord Nishingadev in his Sarupya Mukti, but he would look like Lord Vishnu. He was a Vishnu Bhakta. Same thing with uh, Narada Muni. Narada Muni is a Vishnu Bhakta too. Of course, Narada Muni has a specific form, not really what we would call Sarupya Mukti, but he is engaged in a service. He has his Narada Muni form and he travels around and preaches Krishna consciousness. But, uh, but Narada Muni is also aware of Krishna's pastimes. And there's that story that I tell that he becomes Narada when he wanted to see... Uh, Krishna's Rasa Leela pastimes in Goloka Vrindavan. And Narada also goes to Dwarka, he goes to so many places. But Narada's specific focus is the Vishnu form of the Lord. And every single, we mentioned this before, but every single devotee has his specific Ishta Devata. You know, just like we mentioned Anupama, the brother of Rupa and Sanatana Goswami, who was mainly focused on uh, Lord Ram. So he didn't go to Goloka Vrindavan. It's not that every devotee goes to Goloka Vrindavan. Some devotees go to Ayodhya mm-hmm. in the spiritual world. One may go about so many, many times. Yeah, it's very rare mm-hmm. to, go, to go to Goloka Vrindavan. It was the same with Dhruva Maharaj. He, was, he went to Vishnu. Yeah, Vishnu Loka. He worshipped the former lord known as Prishni Garba. And he went to... Well, first he went to Dhruva Loka. Dhruva Loka. Yeah. But then, and then ultimately when he goes to the spiritual world, he'll be, uh, I'm not sure if he has a sarupya mukti, but he'll be worshipping Lord Vishnu. That's his focus, Lord Vishnu. And primarily the members of the Krishna Consciousness Movement are focused on uh, Krishna and Vrindavan, and also Krishna and Dwarka. You know, someone... Like it's, it's described that some of Jiva Goswami's followers couldn't really accept the uh, Parakya Bhav. Parakya Bhav means where Krishna is running around with other people's wives. <laughs> and actually, he wasn't running around with other people's wives. They were all his wives. Because the marriage, I mean, obviously everything belongs to Krishna, but the marriage of these girls occurred during the time when Krishna actually became all the coward boys. Did you know that? Krishna became the coward boys when Lord Brahma stole the actual coward boys. And that's the year the marriages took place. You know, they got... Because they got the kids married at a very early age. Like if Keshav was present then, he would already have been married. <laughs> yeah, he would have already been married. I mean, sometimes they were getting married like Bhaktivinoda Thakur, I think he was eight years old or something like that. Even Sita Devi, I think. What? Sita Devi. Sita Devi. If he was married in Ramayana, Oh, Ramayana. Yeah, man, actually, yes, yeah, Sita Devi was very young, too. So. But it's not that they live with each other. They waited until they were mature. But it really was useful for people's mentality. Because otherwise, you know, people get to be, what is it, 20, 21, 22, and they go shopping. <laughs> shopping for husbands. I mean, sometimes you hear me tell disciples, you've got to find a husband. 
And there's like, you know, you've heard me say that to some people here in Australia. And they say, I haven't found one yet. <laughs> you know, this is not Vedic culture, you know, basically. Where am I going to look for one? Well, you can look on the internet, you know. Type in husband, Google husband, or something like that. But in the Vedic culture, they were married very early. But one unfortunate thing is there, they get married, but if the husband, or wife, the, if husband dies, yeah. then she becomes a widow. That's true. Mm -hmm. And then they weren't allowed to get married again. Mm -hmm. in the Ved that was an unfortunate thing. Because they didn't have any children, and they, they were mistreated. Yeah, I mean, there's a downside to it. But the upside is that when, if the husband didn't die, then uh, the girl was actually completely, like, focused on the man. And she was chaste, because she wasn't shopping before. Like, when you go shopping, let's say, give an example, mundane example of shopping. Okay, let's say you ladies are shopping for uh, shoes. <laughs> and you, you go, where do you, <coughs> where do you shop for shoes? Myers. What store? Myers. Myers, okay. Let's say, I'm just saying, you go into Myers, and they have the whole shoe yeah. section there? Yeah. And you look at them, you try some on, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Not try some, try all of them. Try all of them. Yes. <laughs> so you, you, it's interesting, you try them on, and then you finally buy one, but then... There's this thing called buyer's remorse. You know what that means? Um, when you look at the price, you're like, oh, it's too much. I won't use it. Or, or you go back home and you think, I should have gotten yeah. that yeah. other set. So that's what, <laughs> that's what happens if one is shopping for husbands. Because <laughs> one has buyer's remorse. That one is thinking... He would have been better than this guy I got. <laughs> why? Oh. You know, so so therefore, that's why that I mean there's a downside to it, obviously, with people dying, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. That's a downside. But let's say in the balance, it creates a more stable society. Because people's minds are fixed. You know, one of the main ways, if you look at young people. One of the main ways their minds are disturbed is the shopping stuff. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? They are. I mean, it's just like... And, they, and how do you meet someone? You know, sometimes they have to go to the bars, right? Not devotees. I hope not. <laughs> so, you know, how are you going to meet people? Or Facebook? Mm. <clears throat> and someone sends like a gorgeous picture of themselves and then you meet them in person and they look like Serpanaka. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the angles of photo lighting. Yeah. So, you know, it, it just creates a disturbance in society, actually. There's all this shopping business. Boys and girls, okay. All these boys and girls and everything shopping, which is true, which is happening. It it's actually disturbs the ether in society. So that's why it's good to have these uh, arranged marriages. Anyway, I'll probably get killed. I'm on the internet. I'm sure people will hate what I'm saying. Oh my God. I lost half my disciples now. So anyway. Does that make sense? I'm not saying we should do it. That's not I'm saying. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying there's a reason for that in Vedic society. You know, people were satisfied by who they had. And they do the research. You oh, yeah, you do the research. I mean, you do a horoscope, yeah. <clears throat> and you find out someone has his characteristics. You, the parents look at the other uh, person's parents, you know, the, the boy's parents or the girl's parents, and they see, because generally the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Mm. What does that mean, Kajun? Mm. Think about it. What does it mean? The apple Did doesn't. You've learned this in school. I have. <laughs> what does it mean that the apple doesn't fall far from the know? tree? Does anyone know? No, I mean, yes. Um, so it means that the kid isn't um, that different from the parents. Yeah. In terms of characteristics. Sorry, in, in, in terms of characteristics, oh. if the parents, you know, raise the kid. 
And so, uh, just like Prabhupada said that the son is like the mother. <laughs> oh, she's shaking her head. No, no, no way. <laughs> and then that, that the daughter is like the father. Sure. Prabhupada, uh, Prabhupada, as a general rule, it may or may not apply in certain circumstances. Okay, on that happy note, we got to do the deity worship. All glory is due to my grace. To the Prabhupada, to the Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Got a lot of people watching. <laughs> they said, Guru Dave, how can you say that? Where'd you go? Shopping. I'm not shopping. Shopping. I'm looking. <laughs>